Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Sam Can Do, the channel where I'm casually trying too hard. Today, you guys are coming with me on kind of a vlog story time about me going to 104 KRBE, it's a radio station, to do an interview for my job. Stay tuned, I'm gonna tell you the whole story. It's six in the morning. It's my anniversary. And I'm going to be on the radio. So we have to wait in 15 minutes. So I'm going to try to fix this in five. So I'll see you when we leave the house. Hayden's ready. I'm not ready to leave, but Hayden's ready. <laughs> I might have killed all my hair, but I look like I'm awake. And so we're headed to the radio station, which is an hour away. So off to you soon we go. And it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary again. Happy anniversary. If, uh, you have ever listened to the Rula and Ryan show, you might be familiar with one of their very popular segments called Roses. And um, I just want to make sure, honey, like, it just so happens that we're heading to 104 on our anniversary. Is there anything that you need to tell me? <laughs> but what they do, if you're not familiar, it's so shady. They find these people who are, like they know, like the women, it's almost always women and they almost always all know that their spouse is cheating and they just need they just need like that final like proof and so someone calls which I'm like how do they not how do these guys not know do they not listen to the radio but anyway so someone calls and goes hey um, we want to give you a free thing of roses we're a new place learning how to do rose delivery who do you want to send your roses to and always they're like their wife's name is like Susan and then it's like oh I want to send it to Karen to care I want to send the roses to Karen and make sure it says hey babe I liked sneaking away from my family and doing it you know it's always like super gross or this one guy was like can you put an eggplant emoji on the card and but they're about to do it because it's Thursday hopefully I'm not a guest on the show Okay, we'll see. Parental discretion is advised was never more appropriate because Darlene thinks that Tim is messing around with her mom. Or I can send it to somebody else. So um, once I give you all the information, you can give me the feedback. Let me start with the fun part. Who's going to be the recipient of the red roses? Uh, okay. Uh, her name is Elle. And I'm so no! Elle, Elle. <laughs> with her just to be the mean. mom is Are pregnant. Serious, the mom, the mom is pregnant. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, so I got to the studio, and you know, when you're a kid, when you imagine radio station, I imagine this like tiny building with a giant radio tower in the middle of nowhere with a bl flashing light on top that goes Yeah, but really, every radio station I've ever been in is inside of some weird like dingy office park and it's just like any other office except you go inside and there's a bunch of computers and radios. Um, so KRB is definitely the largest radio station I've ever been a part of. I, I do lots of interviews for my job. Um, so when you go in, there's tons of interns working on the computers behind the scene. There's the people who are actually live on the air and you're listening to it and it's very, very fast paced and intense. Um, I was actually kind of nervous because both times I've been to this station, I've almost gotten lost. And so I thought I was gonna be late and it's like, you have 15 minutes to prep and then you're on the air, but we ended up getting there on time. Okay, so we got here and we almost thought we were gonna be late and then we couldn't find it, but then we found it. And Nick Swartzen is on here right now. And I don't know if he's actually in the studio, which would be incredible. He says he's out here recording his album. I am recording my album. See, I have a violin. Mm -hmm. That's a ukulele, Terry. Your mom's a ukulele, Terry. Terry, we're going on the bus and going back home. We're not in the mood for your hijinks. I'm not taking the bus, because it sounds like fart. And I was like, oh, maybe this is a recording they did before. Maybe he's doing it from the phone. But much to my surprise, as soon as I walk in the studio, I see him finishing up his interview and my jaw drops to the floor. I was like, I was low key, a little excited about being on the radio because it's really fun. I enjoy media of all kinds. But when I saw him, I was like, this is so freaking cool. And it just felt so surreal that it was his interview and then my interview. And I was like, great. Uh, first of all, I'm nervous because I'm about to be on the air. It's early in the morning and I see someone famous who I think is really cool and I'm surrounded by like my team and anyway, so I'm watching to kind of see what happens and the first interaction that I have with him is he walks out of the studio and into like the side room where all the people are waiting and the interns are working or I don't know if they're interns or behind the scenes people and he just walks in and he goes, give me my jacket. 
And I just kind of stared at him. And I, I was I was seriously like, oh, I'm next to his jacket. So I grab his jacket and I hand it to him. And I'm just like, huh. Uh, hello hi and um but the ladies that i were with they're super like they just don't they didn't know who he was they're like who is that what is he from and they just walk up and go hi hi uh, what's your name can i take a picture with you and he just looked at them and said you don't even know my name but you want a picture with me he was super brutally honest and so i was like if they can ask so i ran in and i thought i was gonna be like funny and chill and like oh my gosh like it's just me I don't care but the only words that I could spit out of my mouth were I'm a fan <laughs> like not even like oh hey I'm a fan it was like I'm a fan. they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never understand uh, I was like can I have a picture with you I I loved you on Reno 911 which I'm sure is like so annoying I don't know I don't know I just felt I just felt annoying um, but it was awesome and he took a picture with me uh, this is the picture and he was so like nice even though he kind of roasted everything that we said but like in a really he was mean in like a nice way and so I I totally appreciated it um, and uh, anyway but the cooler thing after that I know this isn't technically about meeting Nick Schwartzman but that was like extra special um, but Later on that day when I posted a picture and I was like, I tagged him. I was like, hey, thank you so much for letting me take a picture with you. I totally fangirled. How embarrassing. And he commented on the picture and I was seriously low-key, high-key, like very, very excited about it. Like, oh my God, he commented on my picture. So awesome. But anyway, so that kind of like made my day. Oh, I mean, also that it was my anniversary. That was special as well. I mean, this is, looks bad. I was happy that it's in my anniversary. Anyway, so I go, I get on the show. It was really, I mean, it was good. It was fast paced. Um, he asked me some questions. I gave him some answers. You know, I got my people behind me. I'm feeling good. And yeah, and that was it. It's, it's kind of cool because you're standing up, um, speaking into this microphone and you're kind of just looking around and answering really quick. And if you screw up, it's like on the air and maybe someone recorded it forever. So no pressure but you know it was all good it, the, the only thing the only thing i hate about being on the radio or actually doing any like live videos or doing videos in general is i have specific vernacular or language that i use all the time and i hate it and there's so many little like phrases i would love to remove from my entire vocabulary um i'm trying to think of some like uh, something it was so good that's so amazing yeah totally absolutely I don't know my responses just sound so lame but you know you listen to yourself and I feel like you get better uh no but I, I think I've gotten stronger in the way that I talk on camera but yeah it was all in all it's such a cool experience I'm so grateful that I get to do media with my job and I really want to do more I even um, you know side comment this is kind of just a note about this channel in general is that when I wanted to start a YouTube channel I was like what do I want to do a channel about and there's some certain things that I kind of want to stick to as a theme that would be really wise but I always had this thought of like I don't want people to think to look at me and think oh she's trying too hard oh she's you know she's just trying too hard she's you know wanting to do this or how you know she doesn't think how come she thinks she can do this or how can she think you know and I was like you know what? what's so wrong about trying really hard like we all want things in life we all have ambitions and I have an Im I have many ambitions I have many dreams and why not try really hard I mean yes I get it it's unattractive when I'm like when anyone is like desperate for attention or desperate for validation. I don't want to be in that place. I don't want to be desperate for validation of others, but I do want to like desperately fight hard at things that I'm excited about, things that I'm passionate about. And so I am all about it right now. Hashtag team try hard. And if people look at this and say, oh, she's trying too hard, she's doing this. I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm trying really hard and I'm going to try hard at everything that I do. And so that's why I changed the intro to my video. I think that's what kind of is going to be the ongoing theme here is this is Sam Can Do, the place where I casually 
try hard um, <laughs> at many different things. And so I hope you enjoyed this little story time about my day, my anniversary, as well as my day on the radio. And please, this is the very beginning of my YouTube channel. If you could just hit a thumbs up to help other people uh, see my channel and, you know, comment down below if there's something specific that you want to see um, and subscribe. I mean, the videos can only get better from here. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because they're kind of, you know, lame, but they can only get better. So I think you should stick around for the ride. Plus, you know that moment when a YouTuber has like five million subscribers and they're like, some of you fans were with me from day one. Um, and you guys, y'all know the real me and you wish like, man, I just subscribed like three months ago. I wish I was a fan who stuck with it from the beginning. And it's like, you could be that person that subscribes today and one day when I have decent entertaining content on the internet, you're like, well, I stuck with her when she had really, really content and had no idea what she was doing. So, I mean, do, doth I have to convince you anymore to hit that subscribe button? Also, um, again, just comment down below if you have any ideas for me, any suggestions. I would really love to be like, so many of you in the comment section asked for me to do a blank blank blah 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 tutorial because now if I were to say that you'd go to my comment section and um... Uh, yeah, so I want to be honest and I want to have feedback and, and engagement with you and last thing and then I'm, I swear I'm done. Look how look how big my hands look um is i am looking for a youtube mentor i would love a houston based youtuber to take me under their wing and talk to me about different youtube things i want to try hard i want to learn um but that's all i have today so thanks so much for watching and i'll see i'll, I'll always want to do other youtuber sign offs so today it's going to be simply neological uh thanks so much for watching and i'll see y'all later bye